Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to address a question that I received asking about, you know, the, the best ways to use something like Facebook if you have to. And I know around here we're like, you shouldn't just ever use it. And hey, I'm kind of with you, but there are people who legitimately need to use services like this. So <clears throat> in this case, this was a, um, a friend of mine who is the secretary of her church. And of course, they need to use Facebook and stuff, but she does as much privacy things as conceivably possible. But she was doing some things incorrectly. And so I said, well, here's the better way to do it. And I think the way I was explaining it was probably a little bit hard to understand. So I kind of want to walk through the process that if you have to use something like Facebook, that you can use it with a little bit more security. Now, here's what we have as a general problem is that Facebook has its tentacles all over the internet. There are, I think they have about like two dozen different tracking domains, and these are used in various ways and places across the internet to track, even if you're not logged in, they are able to track everything that you're doing, and they just tie everything in and collect all of this data. So what you need to do is you have to protect yourself. Now, as far as uh, some people say, in fact, the very first comment I had when I got in here is it's not possible to go safe online these days. And I disagree. It just takes a little bit more intelligence and a little bit more diligence. Now, there's certainly some things. And if you look at privacy as a one point in time, this is my name, this is my phone number, this is my address. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. I mean, Comcast link, leaked out all of the what's what are supposed to be private addresses, private phone numbers. Um, you see all this kind of stuff, but if you, if you change that paradigm of your thinking of what privacy is, and you understand that privacy is a rolling print of your life, it's a rolling constant, uh, a rolling constant collection of the various things that, that you do, you can recognize that you can stop and block a lot of these things and prevent a lot of companies from grabbing most of the data that you have. Of course, if you just don't log into anything, jump on the internet on tour no one's going to figure out who you are. Now, if you're using Tor and you log into any account, you've immediately de-anonymized yourself unless that account is explicitly and exclusively designed to be used on Tor. All right. Now, to dive further into this, about a year ago, I did a series of videos, uh, and these were reclaiming privacy. And uh, these were these were very interesting videos. Um, I was kind of playing around with different formatting, and I liked the formatting, but they didn't receive enough views to justify the fact that they took me 10 times longer to produce. So maybe if I get to the point where I can do this full time, I'll go back to videos like this. But we looked at uh, first this question that I introduced this video on. We looked at uh, various operating systems, better ways to run email, how to privately browse the web. We looked at at the privacy ledger, something you should be looking at. Why cash is your best bet for privacy and avoiding shoppers club cards at stores. So I kind of covered seven videos on that that are, are quite fascinating. Now with that, what we want to understand is that we want to be able to block what a lot of these companies are doing. And so in order to do that, we need to start blocking some extra trackers and things. Now I have on my website at switch to links.com forward slash privacy dash resources. I have a hosts file. Now I updated the host file today that, um, in that I added the Facebook blocking stuff at the top of the file. So if you do not want to block Facebook, you can just delete those lines of code. But if you do want to block Facebook, but still need to use it in some cases, I'm going to show you today how you can use Facebook and other services without actually giving up your privacy. So let's head on over to the desktop view here. And uh, what we're going to do here is we'll open this guy up in the archive manager. And uh, the other change I made to this file, by the way, is, oh, I thought I did. Oh, boy, it's not uploading, I think it's downloading a, a cached version. Um, I did upload a new version. Um, I will verify after the video that it's the right version. I did check it though. I checked it three times. All right. Um, this might just be a cached version from my web browser. Um, but I added a block for Facebook stuff up, up on the top and there's a whole lot of them. And, uh, what I'm going to do here is let me go over and, um, uh, find that for you. I, I checked every other thing on here, but except that didn't I? All right. 
All right, so here is actually that that list right here. So this is actually the feed that is pushing into my uh, blacklist on my router. So these are all of the ways that Facebook tracks people online. And uh, again, I will make sure that this is up to date after the show is over so you can grab this. The other thing that I did is I, I changed all of these guys over here to... Uh, zeros because 127001 is supposed to work, but on some modern systems uh, like Ubuntu starting in 1804, sometimes these would knock out your internet. Also on Windows, sometimes these would knock out your internet. But if you changed all these 127001 to 0000, it would work everywhere consistently. And so we went ahead and uh, I went ahead and I'm updating the file for those so you can put this in. Now what you're going to want to do is you need to boot yourself up a terminal <clears throat> on Linux and on Mac. You do the terminal. And if you're doing um, if you're doing this on Windows, then you want to go into Windows, uh, System32, Drivers, Etsy, uh, which is ETC, and then you can edit the host file. Now I'll also say on Windows, you first have to go into your control panel, go into your folder options, and make sure that the checkbox is selected to allow you to view extensions for known file types. If you do not do that, then your system, when you try and make the changes to your host file, it's going to resave the host file as hosts.txt, and that will not work. So you have to show extensions for known file types, which, by the way, you should always do anyway, because you want to know for sure that that really is a, a .pdf, not a .pdf.exe that you're actually clicking on. Uh -huh. um, so once you do that, though, then uh, you just kind of go on into your host file, like I said, on Linux and on Mac. It is just sudo nano etc hosts. Enter your password. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to block, um, you're going to go ahead and block all this, uh, all these files here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use, I'll just go ahead and for sake of example, I'm going to put in the Bitcoin miners, which by the way, the new file will have more Bitcoin miners in it as well. Um, I've updated that list to about 25 known Bitcoin miners. All right, so we just add these guys in. In this case, you would add your Facebook links, whatever else, add the whole contents of the host file. Now, if you're doing this on a terminal, it will take a little bit of time. Get in there, push yes, and we are now saved. Now, what will happen is anytime you try and access the file, now this is still going to work for me because I block this on my network level anyway. So what we're going to do is if you head on over to Facebook.com, you'll see that it will not be able to connect because your computer is blocking you from doing it. In my case, I'm blocking this on a PFSense. If you followed my tutorial on doing a Pi hole, then you will be blocking this on a Pi hole. Now, the difficult way I used to have to go around is if you pull up your network, uh, I believe it's network settings, not network connections. You pull up your network settings. Uh, this is a way that you can bypass this all over the place. You come down to your settings and then you can go ahead and set a specific DNS server here. So if I wanted to use the Cloudflares, we can go ahead and add our Cloudflares, which is 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 and then turn off your automatic, hit apply I'm not going to do it. I'm going to show you here. And then once that's done, then you need to toggle on and off your network again. Now, all of your web browsers will bypass what is on your um, on your host file and on your... Uh, actually, I don't... I think it will bypass your host file. I know it will bypass your network settings. Um, and then that will enable you to see it. That's the old way of doing it. But with Firefox having this new DNS over HTTPS, which by the way, I am still highly critical of it. I did a video called Firefox enables DNS over HTTPS, good or bad. I still hold, that is a very ugly face. Um, I still hold, <laughs> that's an uglier face. Oh God. <laughs> ah, why is no still video on a <laughs> picture? Good. Anyway, uh, I still argue that I do not think that enabling um, DNS over HTTPS is a good thing. I am not a big fan of it for the reasons I discussed in the video, but hey, it's here to stay. Let's go ahead and find the solutions that we can use with it. And this is one solution that actually has interesting applications. So if you have Firefox, you can come on down and go into your preferences. 
and scrolling down to your preferences down here, hit your network settings, and inside your network settings, enable DNS over HTTPS. Now you can choose if you don't like Cloudflare. This is an old version of Firefox. You will you should have three or four options in here as well. Um, we're just going to do Cloudflare for now because it's perfectly fine for our example. Save this guy, and then you're going to want to restart your web browser. And now, Facebook will work on Firefox. Now, if I pull up, an, whoop, not Firefox, if I pull up another instance of Waterfox, Facebook will still not work. So this way you can enable DNS over HTTPS on Firefox, still use Firefox for Facebook and use Waterfox or any other browser for anything else. Or if you don't have multiple other browsers or things, you can just enable it when you need to use Facebook and just come right on back down to your preferences and toggle this back off when you're done using Facebook. If I can actually hit the close button. And then once you toggle that guy back off, it's now going to be respecting what's in your host files and Facebook can no longer track you around the internet. So that is actually a very useful feature for DNS over HTTPS. So while I'm critical of it, while I think that there's some problems with it, while I think that it introduces as many problems as it solves, this is an interesting place. Me as a web designer, I oftentimes have to do things for people on Google accounts like Google Analytics or uh, Google Ad Networks or things like this. And when I'm doing this, I used to actually have to go through, bypass the host file, bypass my network security settings, which would actually make my entire computer a little bit less secure. Now that Facebook, uh, excuse me, as Firefox has this feature, I can enable it just on Firefox, which I really don't use for things anyway. So I've enabled HTTP um, uh, DNS over HTTPS on Firefox, and I only use that when I have to access a Google account for somebody or things like this. And even still, I still, I still turn it off when I'm done. But this way, as I'm using the rest of my stuff, I can be neck deep in a project, having my Waterfox open, doing all sorts of internet stuff, and not be putting my computer at risk, not letting Facebook track what they're doing, not let Google track what I'm doing across the internet. I can block all that kind of stuff, and then just jump over to Firefox for those few cases that I need it. Again, if Firefox is really your only browser of choice, just enable uh, enable that setting when you need to use Facebook. Re, uh, disable the setting when you're done with Facebook, and Facebook will no longer be able to track you across the internet. This works perfectly fine for Facebook. Works perfectly fine for Google accounts, Google Analytics, Google Ads, all that kind of stuff, and numerous other things as well. FYI, though, Bitcoin miners are still going to work. All other ad trackers are still going to work. This is why I have a fundamental problem with using DNS over HTTPS, is it makes your browser, despite whatever security you have on your computer, despite whatever security you have on your network as a whole, HTTPS, uh, DNS, I'm going to keep doing that, DNS over HTTPS makes your browser more vulnerable to tracking, to spyware, and to malware. Uh, that I get around other ways. But for those legitimate cases where you have to use a Facebook account, you have to use the Google accounts, Firefox will allow you to get around it and just deal with the limitations therein. So hopefully that video helped you to understand a little bit better about how this feature works, why this feature works. I'll go ahead and have the privacy resources and the um, good or bad video in the comments down here so that you can go ahead and take a look at those videos as well for more information on these. Uh, but those are kind of my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not already and go ahead and uh, give me some likes and some comments down there. Or hey, go ahead and give me some dislikes if you want. If you want, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Uh, anyway, we'll catch you guys later. Hope you enjoy switching to Linux.